what's going on good people welcome back to another episode of trading my live account today is day number 72 it's september the 21st 2023 we made some trades today so let's get into it so first and foremost usually we talk about yesterday's closing price which today was around 730 well 34,730. but we pretty much haven't seen that level from the time the market opened really going all the way back to the pre-market we passed that level and we never looked back so coming into today most of the major levels on the chart were levels that were drawn based off of pre-market analysis as well as price action that happened after the market opened so let's go ahead and get into it now remember one thing before we start remember how i told you on yesterday's trading review that the day after the fomc decision is usually always extremely volatile today definitely turned out to be one of those days and i think that plays a very important role in some of the decisions that i made today so let's go ahead and get right into it <clears throat> so let's start with trades one and two let's start with a market open right here at 9 30. so when we opened up originally we sold off pretty hard all the way back down to a major level of support that had been established in the pre-market now if we were to actually follow that level across we would see that that level lined up with a previous higher low that was established in the pre-market so my idea right here was pretty much just to wait for prices to break back down below the previous higher low and as soon as they did that that's when i wanted to go short but if you look at what i actually did i kind of jumped the gun a little bit right here where i started going short when prices were still above the support level for that higher low i was supposed to wait until they broke down below it because that confirms to me that the higher low has been violated then that's when i needed to short and i was just trying to force the issue right here a little bit too much on trades one and two and i took losses because of that but what's really interesting is that if you look at this loss that i took on the second one let's zoom in a little bit look at where i got stopped out at i got stopped out right here at this blue triangle which also which also pretty much happened to be the exact high for that candle and then that's when prices reversed and the short move actually worked out so anytime you get stopped out at the highest price of a candle when you're going short that means that you were right about the entry but your actual entry level price was definitely way too low and you shorted too low or your stop was too tight and because my stop is always the same the the only solution for me is that my um, my entry was way too low so that's why I always say when you want to go short, you need to make sure that you short from higher prices. And this right here, trades one and two are a perfect example of why that's the case. So after trades one and two, we see the short move eventually happen. We push down, create a long tail candle wick, and then we come back up to retest a previous level of resistance. Now, once we sold off from that level, I shorted right here at three. But if you read the notes, it says I got out for break even when I realized my mistake because I shorted at the lows. And I know that that's not something I'm supposed to do especially coming off of a long tail candle wick like that so i think i caught a good break right here and just realized my mistake before it was too late and got out without having to take a loss so pretty quick thinking on that glad i was able to do that now on trade four i shorted during the downtrend as prices came back to resistance which makes sense but i think the reason this trade came back to break even was because when i look back on it this actually turned out to be a higher low reversal and this is actually one of the higher low reversals that kind of actually throws me off a little bit because I'm used to seeing a, a higher low reversal like something that we saw on trade five where the higher low is clearly established right here. We have a level of support that gets drawn and you can clearly see that prices are coming back to retest that higher low. But in this scenario it's different because I'm just not I've seen situations where you have the wick and then the higher low gets formed as a body. And it just kind of throws me off because I'm saying to myself, do I really count this wick as being a low price? And then if I can count that as a low price, then that means by default, I can count the higher low as being legit. But I don't know. So in scenarios like that, I'll have a, a tendency to kind of short against that higher low because I'm not necessarily recognizing it for what it is. But I think today is the day where I can finally realize that, hey, these wicks do matter. So anytime you see a scenario where you have a long tail candle wick and then it gets followed by a higher low don't fight that even though it's a non-traditional higher low it's still a higher low so you definitely don't want to go short against that so on trade four i was very fortunate to be able to get that trade stopped out for break even because it could have not went my way and just went completely against me so caught a break on that one so after we see prices 
push past that higher low that was created we see prices come all the way back up push past the same point that we were trading from at one and two and then they created a higher low right here so i circled that up extended my line of support across and i used that a little bit later on on trade six and trade seven but before we get there let's look at this next higher low that got formed once we pushed up a little bit further so this higher low was what i was talking about earlier when i said i'm looking for a more obvious type of higher low to actually go long from when i'm using my higher low strategy so this right here is just textbook where we're in an uptrend we've already established one two previous highs before we established this uh last and final third one so i just waited for prices to come back retest that level of resistance excuse me retest that level of support and as soon as they did that and i saw a positive bounce i went long and took it back up to my scalp target now after that we created this lower high right here so that actually played a very interesting role and kind of helped lead me into my next trade at trade six so once we created this lower high we shot all the way back down broke past the support level for that previous higher low that we just went long from and anytime you have a higher low in the market if the market comes back and pushes past that higher low and breaks down below it especially if the market has been down trending before this higher low was formed you have a pretty good chance of that higher low actually not acting as support anymore and you actually can see that level turn into resistance and then you can look to go short from that same level of resistance that used to be support from that higher low so that's pretty much the mindset that i had at trade number six so i saw prices come back retest this level right here on the wig and they pulled down a little bit and then i put my order right back at the same point that they retested from again because one thing i learned is that a lot of times when you catch that first short trade as prices come back to retest resistance they have a very good chance of coming back to retest it a second time and then they get to moving out of there and moving on to whatever destination prices wanted to go to down below so on this occasion today i was just like well i didn't catch the first one but more than likely it's probably coming back up to test it again and i've been i've been had i've had break even trades that got stopped out right there on the second test so i was like you know what today i'm gonna actually not trade the first one but trade the second one and that's pretty much the idea i had on trade six which in terms of my strategy was a great idea i followed that part of the strategy very well but if you read the notes look at this second sentence right here it says my exit could have been better and that's a, a very a very true point because i think i got a little bit greedy right here on trade six because i expected that the downturn would be a little bit stronger because we saw this huge move to the downside right here so i'm saying okay we should pull back and then we should have another very similar move that could push us probably all the way back down to recess these same levels that we make this higher low from a little bit earlier in the session now that's a, a good way to think you know i think that's a logical way to think based on the scenario that i'm looking at but the one thing i have to do is trade what's in front of me the the next level of support that's coming up is the level i need to worry about and then once we move past that level then i can start worrying about the next levels below but I think I kind of got a little bit too ahead of myself right there on trade six because it it really doesn't make sense for me to short at the previous higher low and then not get out at the higher low that came before that. It just makes sense. You know, that's probably going to be a major level where people are going to try and come in and go long from. So I got to work on my exits and I just got to work on having a just a mindset of abundance once again, because me not accepting that profit was me maybe subconsciously feeling as though i won't get any more good opportunities throughout the day so let me just hold this one because this is all i got well it's not always like that you know you got to take what the market is willing to give you you don't really get to tell the market how far it wants to move the market tells you what the key levels are and then it tells you more than likely where it wants to move and it's up to you as a trader to just flow in line with the market don't try and get too greedy take the profits when they're there so that's what i learned right there on trade six now when i saw prices come back you know i caught a a nice little profit on trade six not as much as i should have but it was decent but i was still in my feelings a little bit though and i came back on trade seven and if we read the notes it says i was frustrated and then i gave in and i revenge traded which we know is not a good thing but hey i'm human and sometimes i make mistakes like that and right there i gave back all of the profits that i made from trade six so you know i learned my lesson right there i didn't want to give those profits back but because of the decisions that i made i had to but the lesson was learned and that lesson is 
no matter how you feel about the markets, you can have, you know, frustration. You can have irritation when you're trading because sometimes the market will do you like that. Or maybe, you know, you'll do yourself like that. Depends on how you look at it. But no matter how you feel, you still got to sit back and say, look, I'm still going to take the next best opportunity, not the next opportunity, but the next best opportunity, because that is what will give me the best chance of being successful going forward. I can't just take any trade in the market because then I'm exposing myself to any type of results. I need to take the trades that I know and stick to it. So that's what I learned right there on six and seven. You can have good trades. And even when you have frustration in the market, make sure that you don't act on that frustration. Just accept it. You know, you can't have the market always go the way you want to. But if you look for your best setups, you can bounce back from those losses and make them all back. So that's what I learned right there on six and seven. So after trade seven, we see prices form a double bottom down here at the previous higher low support level that was formed a little bit earlier. And then we see prices push all the way back up, form a new higher low, which was interesting because this one actually never came back to get retested. And from that point forward, we saw a pretty significant bull spike all the way back to the upside where we had 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 14 straight green candles. 16 candles in total 15 of them were green so that's a pretty significant move to the upside and that actually set up the trade that i took on trade eight now right here i saw my higher low strategy i saw prices move up during the uptrend pull back create a higher low so i circled it up extended my support level across across the lows from that higher low and then i looked to go long as prices come back into that level that's a great idea especially during the uptrend but the only thing right here is that if we read the notes, it says, remember that using the higher low strategy and mature trends is very risky. And that's so important because the higher low strategy works better the lower you are in the trend. The higher you get towards the top, you got to realize that people got to take profits eventually. So it's going to be one of these higher lows that gets formed where prices are just going to run straight through it and everybody stops are going to get hit. And everybody that was long that had profit is pretty much going to try and get out so they can lock in the profits that they have. And if you go long right there, you're pretty much going to get caught up in that stop run and that profit taking run. And that's pretty much what we saw at trade eight, because if you notice, once prices made that higher low on their way back down, when they were coming back through that level, they show no signs of stopping. We had a completely red candle right here that had no wicks. So it closed on its lows, opened the next candle at that same price. And this one, the next candle, uh, excuse me, the next candle that we see was pretty much just like the first one, straight selling not really too much buying going on so that's telling you that hey it was buyers in the market before but they're non-existent right now so you really don't want to get in right there and i think i learned this lesson yesterday also which one was it not yesterday but on one of these days i don't know but it was one of the uh one of the more recent trade reviews where i made this same mistake so I think what I, where I went wrong right here was the mindset. I came in with the mindset that I understand my higher low strategy and I'm going to employ it every chance I get on every higher low that I see. That's not necessarily the way you want to go about trading your setups. Even if you believe in your setup wholeheartedly, you still got to realize that the setup doesn't always work. There will be scenarios where the setup has a failure and there will be scenarios where the setup is actually successful. So you got to be able to distinguish the difference between the two. And one of the biggest things I'm learning is that when the, when the when the uptrend is very mature, you don't want to go long with that higher low strategy. And if you do want to go long and you feel like you can't fight the urge, instead of putting your order right there where the support level is and just letting your order rest right there, just hold off on putting the order out. Wait for prices to come back to that level. And then if you see the bounce that you are that you were originally looking for, you can go long as prices are moving away from that level. But if you see prices kind of violate that higher low, then you can kind of brush the sweat off of your forehead and say, Phew, I dodged a bullet right there because I would have went long if I had not known better. So that's pretty much the biggest lesson I learned at trade eight. Either don't take the higher low setup in a mature trend, or if you want to take it and you can't help it, just wait for the reaction that you want before you get into that trade. So after trade eight, we see that stop run and profit taking run pretty much extend all the way back down to what used to be a previous swing high 
which makes sense. That's following the principles of market action. Once you break past what used to be a previous high in the market, the market some way, somehow has a tendency to come back and retest that level. Even if it has to move down by a whole 80 points, it'll come back and hit that level once again. And that pretty much led me to trade number nine. Now, trade number nine, I would say this was probably one of my only trades today where I just traded purely based off of how I felt and not really on anything else that was concrete. And if we read the notes, that's pretty much what it says right here. It says I shorted based on my feelings instead of waiting for a clear signal. I just believe that because the selling was so strong that we were coming back to retest this previous higher low because, I mean, that's the most obvious level, right? Which is true. If you look at what happened afterwards, we did come back to retest that level. But you don't just want to short because you see prices coming into a level. You want to say, oh, OK, I see where prices are going. Now, let me be patient. Wait for prices to come to the ideal levels that I would like to enter from. And then that's when I'll get in and participate with the move. So that's pretty much what led me to trade 10, because once we came back to trade 10, notice how before we got there, we formed this higher low. Right. So I circled it up, drew my level of support across the lows. And as soon as we broke back, as soon as we broke back down below that higher low, that's where I went short because I saw that this was the ultimate swing high for this uptrend that started from 940. Right. We went from thirty four thousand four hundred and sixty up to around thirty four thousand six hundred and fifty. So, you know, nice, almost 200 point move. And then we sold off very hard. We tried to come back and bounce back. But if you look at this price level right here, we were never able to come back up to either break these previous highs or at least come back and make an equal high. So that means that this right here is a lower high, not only on the one minute chart, but on the higher time frames also. So that'll you look. So when you get a lower high on the higher time frames other than the one minute, it usually leads to a very strong and sharp sell off on the one minute chart. And that's pretty much what we saw here. So notice how after we made this swing high, we pushed down, created a, another lower high right here. So after that, I'm like, OK, we have two lower highs coming up that already happened. Once we push back down below a level that used to be previous support, it should act as resistance. So I want to take that short trade right there. And that's pretty much what I did at trade 10. I shorted once prices broke back down below the higher low and then just took it back down to the next level that I was aiming for originally on trade number nine. So I was able to make back the, the losses that I made on nine plus a little bit extra. So, you know, all in all, it worked out, but I still feel as though nine was definitely not a trade I should ever take. It's like, OK, you have a good idea, but make sure that you always, always, always wait for that confirmation. Very important. So after trade 10, we see prices continue lower, continue lower. So once they got down to this point right here and established this swing low, I looked over to the left and identified the level that I thought prices were coming back to. So I identified this previous higher low that we made the double bottom from a little bit earlier in the session. So I'm keying that level in as the level that I want to aim for for these next round of trades that I want to take. So on trade 11, I shorted as prices came back to retest resistance. And my stop at break even got hit once prices moved away and came into my favor and then immediately came back to my entry. So I think that's a, a good trade right there. You know, I, I went in line with what the market was doing. We were in a downtrend, so I shorted from previous levels of resistance. Good trade. Now, this is one of those scenarios where the break even function really protects you from taking any losses after the fact. Because I remember yesterday I took a lot of break even trades and I was like, man, one of the the push and pulls and trade offs that you get with trading with a break even stop is that even though it'll protect you sometimes from taking bad losses, sometimes it'll keep you out of those really good trades when prices come back to retest your entry price and then move away to originally hit your profit target. So this right here is one of those great examples where the break even stop protects you from taking further losses, because if I would have negated my break even stop and move my stop back to where it should have been originally i would have had to take that loss because prices would have definitely came back and ran through my stop so this is what i mean when i say this is the push and pull and the trade-off that you deal with when you use a break even this is one of those scenarios where it definitely can benefit you so after this trade gets stopped at a break even we see this higher low get formed right here that leads us to higher prices up towards the next level of resistance where this higher low used to act as support we got rejected from there created a lower high 
So once I see that lower high after we got rejected from a previous higher low that used to be support but is now resistant, I see prices break back down below a previous support level, come back and retest it. So that's, that's where I went short right, right here on trade 12. 12. Now, if we read the notes, it says I took the same trade as 11, right? But holding this trade would have been profitable. And that's what I said when I was looking at this, when I was writing up my notes. But now that I'm looking back on it, I kind of understand why I got out of it. I got out of it because when I'm shorting based on a higher low strategy, actually becoming a failure and not a success, I like to see prices break back down below the higher low, come back up to retest that higher low and then move away. Now, right here, I kind of got in front of it and anticipated a little bit because if we zoom in, it's kind of similar to what I did on one and two, where I shorted before prices actually broke back down below that higher low. So because I took losses on trades one and two, I kind of realized the same mistake that I made on trade 12 and I just got out. I was like, it has a pretty good chance of probably moving down lower. But if it's not a trade that aligns with my trading plan, I just got to get out because if I take a loss that's outside of my trading plan, I just feel bad because it's like, OK, you study all of these things and practice all of these things and then came into the market and did none of that. So it's like a science experiment. You have an independent variable and a dependent variable. But if you have two dependent variables in your experiment, you'll never really be able to understand what exactly led to the results you got because both uh, variables could be switched up. So. Trading is like an experiment where you have an independent variable, which is your trading setup. If you do that the same way every time, you'll have a concrete answer as to why this trade setup works in certain scenarios and why it doesn't in others. So anytime I'm outside of my trading plan, I just got to get out. No matter what the scenario might be, no matter how much I think it's moving in my direction, I just got to do the right thing and make the right decisions regardless of the market scenario. So I feel like I, I did a pretty good job of just getting out right there at trade 12. And that pretty much led me to being able to have a clear and open mind and being able to process the market for what it was. And then that led me to that led me to trade number 13. Now, at 13, I shorted here based on the same idea from trade number 12. And then I held this trade back down to support. So instead of getting in early, like I did at trade 12, I waited for prices to break back down below the higher low level. Right. Which should now act as resistance. And then when they come back up to retest that level, that's when I take the short trade and hold it back down to the next level of support down below. So that's what I did right there on 13. And after trade 13 was over, we see prices kind of pull up, create a little micro minor higher low right here, but a higher low nonetheless. So I circled it up, drew my level of support across the lows. And then I use that as a reference point to go short from on trades 14 and 15. So 14 right here is kind of hard to see because I pretty much I closed this trade manually because I was a little bit scared when prices came back up to this level, because to me, it looked like it was a higher low. Because if you look at where we formed this swing low at this swing low came from around thirty four thousand five hundred. Then we pushed all the way back up thirty four thousand five hundred and fifty. So if you move 50 points up off of a swing low, you have a very good chance of a higher low being created as prices make their way back down because. It's just too many buyers and too much buying strength for the market to just sell off and push all the way back down to retest this level that it came from. It doesn't mean that it can't happen that way because I have seen scenarios where you had a 50 point move to the upside and then the market gave it all back. But more than likely, I would say like seven times out of 10, if you move this far to the upside, you'll probably create a higher low somewhere on the way back down. But I just couldn't recognize that in the moment. And um, when I shorted right here on trade 14, I just got out because it just didn't feel right. You know, something was something was off. It's not a I can't really necessarily identify this higher low per se. When I go back through my notes, I don't have any higher lows that look like this. But it was something in my mind that just said, mm, I don't know. I feel like it is a higher low. So I just got out right there. But looking back on it, trade 14 would have actually been a, a decent trade. It wouldn't have gave me my full um profit target that i was looking for but i would have been able to get out down here towards support as prices came back down to that level so overall i would say 14 even though i scratched that trade it was a decent decision to be made but i can't say the same for the next trade right here at 15 because on 15 i shorted right here at the lows because i just felt as though prices were going to continue to move lower and this kind of goes back to the idea i had at trade nine where i'm like this is how i feel 
So I'm just going to trade based on how I feel, which is not what you want to do. You want to have feelings about the market because you got to trust your intuition because you study so much that, you know, your mind does subconsciously tell you what could potentially be coming up. But you also want to make sure that you confirm that before you go acting on it. You also want to make sure that you don't short at the lows. This is also another example of why you don't want to short from the lowest prices. You want to make sure you short from those higher levels above at resistance and then take those trades back down. So on 15, learn some lessons right there. But I was able to bounce back from my mistakes on my next series of trades. So after trade 15, we see prices come up, create a higher low right here. So I circled it up, um, didn't draw a level of support across it because we had this level right here. So I'm like, yeah, that's good enough. We don't really have to redraw that. But I see what's going on right here. So we push up back up to this previous level of resistance that we had trouble getting through for a pretty long time but once we pull back down i'm like okay i went long right here as soon as prices came back to retest that level of support that's my higher low strategy right there only thing was it came back to break even which is fine you know sometimes that's how it goes like we've been learning over these past couple of days but on this next trade right here trade 17 i saw prices starting to move away after they stopped me out at break even and i was like you know what I just have a very strong feeling that prices are moving higher because we've already moved off of the lows at 500, created a non-traditional higher low, but a higher low nonetheless, followed by a second higher low. So that means that right then and there, the buyers are in control. So that's the side of the market that I should be trading on. So that was my idea going long right here. I just felt like the market should move up from here. But I was a little bit too early and we saw prices come all the way back down to actually retest that previous uh higher low that never actually came back to get retested so that's one thing about the market too you might move past the level that never gets retested and you might start thinking to yourself oh you know okay i guess the market just wanted to move past that level and never come back but somehow some way the market just has a a, a funny method of working its way back to that price retesting it and then doing what it was supposed to do but it's like the market just said hey ty we can't just let that level be untested we gotta come back and test it so i think that's pretty much what happened right here and i don't know i just feel like a loss right there it's just one that i had to take i couldn't avoid that loss because i saw my setup i saw everything working and i had to take it but sometimes it just doesn't go in your favor it'll have a false breakout and then bounce back but that's another one of my rules too that i haven't really had to use in a while but if you go back to some of my old trade reviews I talked about how when you have a trade that you take that moves in line with the market trend, you trade it from the best levels in the direction of prices that they were going and you still got stopped out. It's like, dang, you know, that's tough. But if you see prices spike all the way back up through your original entry price from the trade you just got stopped out from, you got to re-enter that trade and you got to take it. It might feel weird because you're getting back into the same trade you just took a loss from, but you also have to realize that if they spike back through your original entry price after they stopped you out, that means that it's momentum that's coming up into that level that you originally went long from. And that momentum is probably more than likely going to push prices higher. So don't be in your feelings about the last loss that you took. You know, you got to take that loss and move on. Forget about it and focus on the next best trade. Don't let your previous loss prevent you from taking gains on the next possible opportunity, even if it does come literally one candle later. So that's pretty much the idea I had right here on trade 18. Prices spiked back up through my original entry price. So I went long right there and then just held it back up to what I thought should be the next level of resistance, which was the previous support level that we established from this higher low that got created over here towards trade nine earlier in the session. And after that, I decided to call it a day because, you know, I started off really rough. Trades one and two kind of kind of hurt my heart a little bit because I know that I should be making better decisions than that and then you know not being able to make profit on three and four kind of put me in a, a weird space but I started to get my mojo back around trade five and just realized that hey Ty you got a good plan but execution is important so just make sure you sit back be patient follow your trading plan and make the best decisions and let's see how this turns out and once I started thinking along those lines it actually turned out to be a pretty decent day so Overall, I would say like, you know, I'm I'm happy with my performance, but at the same time, it's a lot of things I got to clean up. You know, I think for me as a trader, one of the biggest things I got to focus on is being able to clean up those iffy trades in between my best trades. 
So you look at a trade like 18, a trade like 13, a trade like 10, a trade like five, what six could have been. You know, in between those trades, I took a lot of, you know, BS crappy trades that really didn't need to be taken for the most part. So I think that comes back down to discipline. It comes back down to not having FOMO and it comes back down to being patient. So those are the three things that I want to focus on the most. And I think if I can get those things right tonight in my back testing session, tomorrow should be a very good Friday and I should be able to close off the week fairly strong. So that's pretty much all I got for you guys. I hope you learned a lot about just being patient, being disciplined and not taking any trades that are not within your trading plan. That's so important. But that's all I got for right now. I'll be back on September 22nd tomorrow at 9.30 a.m. But until then, you guys, study hard and take it easy.